there's lots of social networks, but there's really only one business social network. LinkedIn has monopoly on that and it's continuing to grow. Hello, welcome to episode 213 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Colin Herdman, founder of Rainmaker and LinkedIn lead generation expert. Projected to reach nearly 1 billion users by 2028, LinkedIn is quickly growing, but is underutilized as a lead generation tool in real estate. Throughout our conversation, Colin discusses the evolution of LinkedIn as a powerful sales tool and shared tips for building an authentic audience and effective strategies for connecting and messaging potential clients. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, let's get on with our conversation with Colin Herdman. If you're interested in taking your lead generation to the next step on LinkedIn, be sure to check out his website, rainmakergrows.com. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit. Uh, I know you're in Minneapolis, but tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial background. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, appreciate it, Michael. So I've been an entrepreneur really my whole life. I started my first company a week after I graduated from college with a criminal justice degree, which I never used. Uh, I also never took a marketing business or accounting class in college. So it was all trial by fire. It was just kind of as luck would have it, uh, opportunity to get into business, and um, I did it. So uh, I owned that company for about a decade. I sold that in 2006, and then 2007, I started Monkey Island Ventures, which is a company I started with two buddies of mine, Josh and Zach. Uh, we've all known each other since we were around five years old, and Monkey Island is the named after a park that we used to play at when we were kids. Awesome. So we've been doing a lot of... Um, you know, building since 2007, um, you know, probably close to a dozen um, SaaS products, software products uh, with varying levels of success there. A lot of good lessons learned. We started a, a digital marketing company about nine years ago, a software development company about six years ago. I have about uh, 40 people here in Minneapolis. And then um, the, the latest Endeavor uh, Rainmaker is what um, I've been working on since January of this year, uh, based off of the five or six years of kind of um, LinkedIn um, strategy and process building that I've been using for our own products and now um, helping others with that. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for our audience, obviously, is real estate agents and brokers and people in the real estate space. And, uh, you know, when I look at when I'm you know, searching the agents that are either joining the podcast or some yeah. of the, you know, other people that we work with, uh, they have really robust, um, you know, Instagram channels or Facebook channels, but then when you, you might find them on LinkedIn and there's really not a whole lot there. So I'd love for you to kind of talk about the evolution of LinkedIn and, and how, you know, you see it, uh, you know, as a sales and lead driver. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, you know, I think, it, it, it's funny because I'm talking to prospects, you know, throughout the week and uh, I was on with one yesterday and he had kind of a negative view of, of LinkedIn and kind of he hadn't really been on it for the last you know decade, at least posting anything. And, you know, some of the people that he was talking to were kind of giving him negative vibes about it as well. well I spent a half an hour talking him through a lot of what I'm going to talk to to you and your audience about today. And he said, Colin, you totally changed my perspective on, on LinkedIn. So, you know, one thing I want to make clear with, 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 with Rainmaker, the, the, the service that I have, um, everything we're going to talk about today, uh, your audience can go do themselves. You don't need me and you don't need uh, Rainmaker to, to do anything um, that, that, um, that I'll be bringing up today. So that's really what I love more than anything is just educating audiences on how they should um, really use and think about LinkedIn and kind of broke it out into three ways. So there's kind of philosophy, Underneath that, I think about audience and audience building. And underneath that are the strategies then that you'll use in LinkedIn to reach out to the audience that you're building. So, you know, philosophically, I think everyone needs to come to LinkedIn really with being genuine and authentic to who they are. I think most people do a good job of that. 
uh, you don't see a lot of toxicity on LinkedIn versus a lot of the other social networks, which is great. Um, LinkedIn, another reason why you want to be there is there's lots of social networks, but there's really only one business social network. LinkedIn has monopoly on that and it's continuing to grow. Uh, they're continuing to add functions and features and make it more robust. So I think it's a it's a place, whether you're B2B or B2C, you really need to fo start focusing some time and learning about the platform. So I think, again, most people are, are authentic and genuine, um, both to themselves and also how you represent, you know, the, the brands and the companies um, that you're, um, you know, own or employed from. The other thing is then coming to LinkedIn with an educational mindset. Uh, nobody wants to be sold on LinkedIn, but I think virtually everyone's willing to be educated on LinkedIn. And then lastly, and this is where I put a lot of pressure on myself as a, as a founder, but I'd put that same pressure on anyone else that's an entrepreneur that is a, or is sitting in a marketing or a sales seat, which is you have to um, know the pains and the barriers that your prospects are trying to overcome. You need to know what it is they want to be educated on. And most specifically, you need to know what it is that they want to learn from you. And if you can crack that nut of knowing explicitly what it is that your audience wants to learn from you, I think anybody that is B2C or B2B could be successful using uh, LinkedIn. So that's really how I think about it. And, you know, whether, you know, you're uh, more of like a, a tech founder like me or whether you're, you know, in real estate, uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. That philosophy of what I have um, this laid out, I think, is is the philosophy that if you um, take that upon yourself, you have a real opportunity to start gaining traction on LinkedIn. So then underneath that is around like audience and audience building. So one of the things that. Uh, you know, I use Sales Navigator most of the time to build out my audiences. Uh, you can build out audiences, you know, through Sales Navigator or through the regular LinkedIn search. So, you know, if you're a if you're a real estate agent, you know, your um, local market is probably you know what's most important to you. Uh, so, I'm here in the Twin Cities, uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul. So, you know, starting to hone in on on your audience um, using various LinkedIn filters where um, you know, you could start um, honing in on geo. You could start looking at, you know, by by title. Um, you could look at um, a bunch of other filters on LinkedIn that would start to help you start hone in on um, the kinds of people that you'd want to uh, start uh, getting connected with. Uh, the other thing that I started thinking about the last few months is around audience intent. And how do I find people that are maybe further down the purchase path for what I'm offering? So one uh, thing could be if uh, if I was an agent, uh, you know, in um, the Twin Cities, if there were other um, LinkedIn events going on that had to do with real estate, the real estate market uh, could be from, you know, another agent. It could be from uh, a company, a uh, real estate company. It could be from a real estate organization. If they're putting on uh, LinkedIn events and your prospects would be attending these events, if you go and click the attend button on these events, you can see everyone else that's also attending the event. <clears throat> so you'd be able to start identifying an audience of people that are already thinking about, you know, real estate, that are thinking about potentially buying a home or are curious about mortgage rates or are in, interested in maybe finding a commercial space. So you're already potentially able to start identifying people that are thinking about that just by attending other LinkedIn events. And those wouldn't even have to be necessarily um, local. There could be, um, you know, like a more of a national event that's happening. And then maybe you're attending that event and then starting to look at everybody that's attending that event that's in your local market. Right. And starting to build connections there. So um, that's one. Uh, another would be like using a person as a proxy. If there's um, somebody else that's kind of a, a thought leader around real estate or is pushing out a lot of really unique content around, um, you know, mortgage rates or uh, making some of this up here on the fly. But <laughs> if you connect with that person um, as a first connection on LinkedIn, and if their connections are open, you could go into your LinkedIn search or in a sales navigator and say, okay, I'm going to select, you know, Michael. And I want to see everybody that's a first connection to Michael, but as a second or third connection to me, that is also in Minneapolis and St. Paul, because I know that they're probably following, you know, you, if you're putting out really good um, real estate content, they're probably following you because they're interested in, in real estate. Um, and would be potentially a good prospect for me to be connected with. So, um, but most of the time, I'm just simply building um, audiences using Sales Navigator, and mm -hmm. that's working actually quite well. 
So you know, we've talked about the philosophy, we've talked about the audience, then underneath that really are the, the strategies that you should start implementing uh, on LinkedIn. So once you have the audience and audiences identified, you need to, you need to start connecting with them. And so what, what I um, typically do for, for myself and all my clients is um, connect with 25 people a day, Monday through Friday during normal working hours. So 125 a week, 500 a month. And we're getting anywhere from like generally about a 10 to a 40% connection rate back. And it really depends on the, the audience. And so, you know, if you're targeting a uh, like a, a local geo where you maybe live, um, most likely you're going to have a lot of mutual connections with the people you're reaching out to, um, which is great because that's the number one reason why someone will follow you back is mutual connections. Um, and then if someone doesn't connect within 30 days, we'll withdraw the, the invite. Then there's a three week period of time where you can't reinvite them. But after that, you could reinvite them again to connect. And you can kind of create these pools of people that you'd want to reach back out to to connect. And most of the time, people aren't connecting back. It's not that they don't want to connect with you. A lot of times it's they're busy. They're not paying attention to their alerts. And when they do, your invite just got pushed down and they're they're just not paying attention to it. So, um, and again, all of these functions about like withdrawing invites, that's all available to to everybody listening through their LinkedIn account. You can go in and you can withdraw those 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 invites. So, um, and then a lot of times with the, the invite campaign, um, when we get new connections, we'll bolt on like a, a messaging campaign. Mm -hmm. And the messaging campaign that, um, you know, I'm recommending is, uh, you know, after someone connects and we're typically not using a connection message we're not at, we're not putting a message in when we're asking for the connection it's just trying to get the connection um, without a message but after they connect then like you know a day or three days later send a message just authentically thanking them for the connection do not try and sell anything but don't even try and help don't even try and provide value just thank them authentically for that connection if you um, if you get a response, it'll go right into your in LinkedIn inbox and you can message away and see see where that goes. Um, if um, they don't respond, then typically we'll send another message like a week later and that's where you really wanna start to provide value. So I'll use one of my clients as an example. Um, he is owns a, a law firm and uh, his law firm wants to break into the blockchain space. And so he is, um, following up blockchain founders after they initially connect, and he'll say, you know, hey, Michael, um, thanks so much for connecting. I'm really passionate about the blockchain space. I know you are as well. Look forward to seeing your content, something like that. Right. Well, he knows, again, based off of philosophy, he knows that his audience is very passionate. Anybody that's in blockchain is very passionate about the technology and where that space is going. Um, and so he's even starting to build a little rapport just in the little nuanced message that he uses there. Um, his second message is, hey, Michael, I find myself more and more writing about the intersection of law and blockchain, and I'm wondering if there's any topics you have interest in me writing about, okay? And so what that's doing is it's allowing him to um, start getting a response from uh, his audience in ways where they're, um, you know, looking at him as being a thought leader. They're looking at him as being someone that um, they could get an answer to around, you know, a specific law that may or may not be passing. Um, and so he's already starting to build up some rapport and getting a really nice response rate off of those messages. And so again, that, that, kind of pressure on each of us is to figure out, you know, what type of messaging do we want to start putting out to people? And so um, the one of the, um, you know, opportunities for um, anyone in real estate, you know, is really sharing, sharing your knowledge. Uh, and I think that's where you have opportunities then as you're creating these first connections. You know, if you're posting like any LinkedIn articles um, and making it highly relevant, all of these first connections now that um, you're connecting with will start seeing, um, potentially seeing the alerts that you're posting articles, right? And then having your audience clicking into those articles and, and, and reading and starting to build um, um, some rapport and starting to um, kind of show yourself as a, as a thought leader. Uh, but one of the strategies that's been working really incredibly well for me are also uh, doing LinkedIn uh, live streams. And the, the great thing about LinkedIn live streams is that you're able to take a topic and deliver um, 
invites to that live stream event to a specific um, audience. And so, um, you know, I'll kind of play out um, a scenario for how um, I'm, I'm using them. Um, and so I've been doing them probably about five or six months now. I'm doing them almost every week. And what I will do is I will first identify uh, like a discrete audience that that I that I want to go after. Um, And um, I will build connections out with that audience. And then I will create um, a live stream event around a specific topic. And um, so for me, my specific topic is, you know, I have the the kind of the general one, which is learn how to grow your LinkedIn network leads and sales. Another one that I just started to do is, um, you know, learn how to um, perform LinkedIn live streams. And um, so that's like now a second live stream that I'm doing where I'm teaching people um, how to do those live streams. I'm giving all the information away for free. So any of the, you know, anyone in, in real estate with what, with what you know and where your areas of specialty are, um, one of the things that you could then start doing is saying, okay, um, you know, let's pretend like I'm, a, I'm an agent here in the Twin Cities, right? We know that real estate is also very, very local. Um, and so what are, for, for people that would be, you know, are thinking about, um, you know, moving in 2025, right? Maybe there's, you know, some type of a live stream event where I'm going to say, you know, create some kind of a titled event around, you know, like, you know, why 2025 might be, you know, a great, a great year to move or something like that, right? And so you could maybe start talking about, you know, the the Fed's, you know, starting to make interest rate cuts, you could start talking about, you know, the, the health and, um, kind of viability of the different um, areas of, of the Twin Cities, right? So you could start educating your audience, uh, those that want to know more about if they're thinking about maybe making a move in 2025, they could start to learn from you. But what the real value is in doing these live streams is that you can test audiences and you can test topics and you can start to understand what's resonating and what isn't. So if you create this live stream and then you start inviting your first connections that are located in your market about this live stream, they get a nice soft alert that you're inviting them to this live stream event. You're going to get people clicking through to that. If they're not clicking attend, then your audience or your topic or both are off. But if you're getting people to click attend, you're now having um, your prospect saying, you know, here's who I am and I'm clicking attend because I trust you enough and I want to learn from you around the topic that you'll be presenting on. And what's really great about that is that live streams is something LinkedIn wants to push more of. And so when you go live on on LinkedIn, what you're able to do is um, take advantage of kind of the network effects of LinkedIn being a social network. So when you go live, your followers, your first connections, and anyone that clicks attend is going to get notified that you've gone live. Um, And so what I've noticed is you're going, when you're live on LinkedIn, um, other people that are on LinkedIn that you maybe didn't even invite to the event will potentially get a notification that says, you know, Michael's live right now. And they're going to click through and say, oh, I wonder what he's talking about. So you're going to get people coming in and out of the live stream. So you're getting brand impressions even beyond um, the, the the people that you might be targeting um, to invite to that live stream. But then what I do after the live stream is done is I will um, respond to each attendee and I'll say, mm-hmm. hey, Michael, thanks so much for registering for the LinkedIn live stream that I led this morning. Not sure if you're able to attend or not, but in case you missed it, here's a link to the recording, right? And so that live stream gets saved on uh, the event page on LinkedIn forever. And um, then underneath that, I will say, if you ever want to chat LinkedIn strategy, feel free to grab some time convenient for you here. And I give them my Calendly, right? And we know that, um, you know, pretty much every business is a relationship business, especially in real estate, right? And you need to build relationships and trust. And that is what I think is one of the greatest things about the live stream is that when you're done, you can send a message back to the attendees and you can give them a Calendly and it doesn't feel pushy and it doesn't feel salesy, it doesn't feel icky in any way. And it allows you then to start building relationship with the people that are wanting to learn from you. And it's really setting yourself up to be in a position really as a thought leader and someone that they can trust just by the content you're putting out. And so, you know, the decks that I'm presenting on, um, I'm pretty much using the same content every single week. And 
Um, so you don't have to keep coming up with new content every week, right? You just need to come up with something that has, you know, at least a, a few months you know, if not more of um, still being, you know, up to date and reliable and timely. So, uh, and I know, you know things can change quite a bit, you know, as, as, as real estate goes market to by market, as well as kind of just across the U.S. But um, all that is to say, there are topics that you could absolutely bring in um, that you could create a deck around that you could do, you know, week in and week out. And I've even seen you know, some people sign up three or four weeks in a row right. to the same live stream because they couldn't make it the, the first few times. So that's the great thing about using the LinkedIn event invite function is that you're not spamming people with like a first degree message. It's not like mm -hmm. you, you keep inviting them and they keep seeing this in their messages. It's just right. bundled in with the other alerts. And then the other thing, there's a long tail effect, too, that happens with LinkedIn live streams is that because it's saved as a recording, some people will be clicking into the event after it's already over. Right. And so when they click in, they're seeing the recording. So what I will do is I'll capture all my analytics as soon as the live stream is done. And then I can see how many people. So I did a, an event last Thursday and, um, you know, a week ago, Thursday, not yesterday. And um, during the live stream, we had, we had like 60 people sign up and we had, uh, I don't know, maybe like around 120 minutes, like total watched time during the live stream. But then I went back again um, a couple of days ago to look at my analytics and I had 400 minutes. So, you know, we had like another 280 minutes watched on the recording. Okay, so there's this there's this long tail effect that can happen with with the content that you're that you're building out. So, you know, those are those are a, a few strategies. Another one that's kind of opened up now are LinkedIn groups. So if you're involved in any groups where your prospects might be hanging out um, there, there was a, a limit where you could only send 10 messages a month. Um, to all of the groups that you're a part of. Um, but it looks like they've, they've lifted that. I did a test and was able to get um, beyond the 10 messages um, even in a single day. So that would be one thing too, is that if you're doing an event, whether it's in person or a live stream, or if you have like a, you know, some uh, a piece of uh, really unique content that maybe that you've built out or something really unique that someone else built that you want to share to your prospects, you know, you could do that. Um, you could do that through uh, messaging um, your second and third degree connections, even through um, through groups. So they don't have to be a first connection. Um, right. So, but yeah, so there's, there's other strategies we could get in, into as well, but those are kind of the main ones that I've seen work really well. And right. uh, I think it would work well for your audience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in for real estate agents, you know, really that providing that value and, you know, those educational pieces, like that's really where you are building that trust and rapport. Cause that, I mean, when it comes down to it, that's what an agent is trying to do with a that's new right. lead, a new prospect is you were trying to, you know, showcase yourself as that expert, yep. you know, as opposed to the other, you know, 55 agents that live in your little neighborhood. I mean, there's thousands right. in the Jacksonville yep. area. And the more I can provide those educational pieces, the, you know, the more I build that trust. And I think, you know, with LinkedIn, I love that idea of, um, you know, connecting like, the, you know, the, um, the, uh, the lawyer example there, I can think of as a real estate agent, you know, connecting with my local mortgage brokers or even my local, you know, lawyers or different, different, uh, people in different professions and asking those questions, what would your, you know, sphere of influence, what would your customers benefit from, yeah, you know, having that. me write yeah. uh, pieces yeah. in and even yep. inviting them to, you know, join those articles or even live streams. Yeah. Well, and one of the things you could even do is potentially then with those relationships you're building kind of with these that your own referral network is maybe you start partnering up. Mm -hmm. And doing the right. live streams where you're sharing your content with their audience and then maybe they're sharing their content with your audience. Right. So there's just a whole bunch of opportunity for you to use your knowledge, use your uh, valuable connections to build out content and get exposure to, to audiences. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, LinkedIn is a social network. It's about people. Mm -hmm. It's about relationships. And I think. Um, you know, things that we're talking about today are, are practices people could literally put in place and start yeah. getting traction on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that, that just the, from the audience building uh, part of it, you know, I would, I think for, even from a time 
standpoint and getting my content in front of people and mm-hmm. getting my name in front of people, you know, going from trying to cold call 25 leads a week that I'm probably, I mean, very small percentage are even going to answer the phone yeah. uh, versus, you know, trying to connect with a, a pretty specific group or list of people uh, on LinkedIn is I, I have to imagine my name is going to uh, actually get in front of them, you know, at a higher rate on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that that's right. Well, I think the other thing too is just you know, even expanding out your first degree network with with people that, um, you know, are people that you could serve, that you could help. Th- just doing that is going to um, by making those connections and then starting to deliver, um, you know, the assets that we've talked about today. Uh, that's allowing you to further those relationships in a way that doesn't feel like salesy or pushy. You're immediately uh, you know, differentiating yourself against all those other agents. So, um, and I, I, you know, I talk about audience building, you kind of have quality on one end and quantity on the other. And you, you, in terms of like building out your first connections, you don't want the quality to be so poor that you're just connecting with a bunch of people that, you know, are never going to do business with you. But you also don't want paralysis by analysis where you're focusing on every little, you know, nuanced aspect of whether you're going to connect with these people or not. I mean, you know, I would say the the majority of, of people um, that you'll want to connect with on LinkedIn, you know, are probably in a home or thinking about buying a home. Right. And so um, that's a pretty a pretty big audience of people you could start connecting with. So then it's starting to think about, okay, like, do I want to start focusing on like title, you know, of certain types of people? Um, You know, what are these different LinkedIn filters that I could use that might start getting me in front of people that, you know, might kind of be in these income brackets that are more of my ideal client? You're not going to know that specifically through through LinkedIn because you don't get that. But you could start honing in on you know, you know, how long they've um, been in the workplace, right? Using that's, that's something you can see on LinkedIn. Um, You can, you can certainly do it by title, uh, by geography. So I think you could start honing in on audiences that um, could actually be kind of your more ideal client profiles. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, you know, for the, the Jacksonville market specifically, um, not too long ago, uh, we ranked as one of the fastest growing, um, cities for businesses, you know, Mm. know, bringing their businesses here. And I I, just thinking about, you know, really going after and trying to connect with those HR directors and Mm -hmm. those people that are part of the recruiting process for bringing Mm. in people to their businesses. Mm. And if you can connect with them and provide that relocation, you know, information, that's a great source of. That's a great idea. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's right. Yeah. Getting, getting creative on some of that. I think the other thing is if you're doing the live streams, I just got invited to go speak to a group of business owners in person that I'm going to be doing in early November. I'm doing that because I've I've showcased some of my talent through some of the live streams that I'm doing. So just doing those those live streams um, also gives you some cachet uh, for people um, that may be wanting to bring in like even a, a speaker. So I think it could even just open up some other opportunities that wouldn't be available to you if you hadn't already done some of that work. Right. For, uh, you know, once you've, you know, we're talking about building the, um, the connections and, you know, uh, doing the messaging, how important is it to have something, you know, some kind of a lead magnet or something like that on their page, you know, so that if, you know, maybe they weren't able to attend your event and get those messages that they have a way to kind of funnel down to go to that Calendly and, and create that, um, you know, set up that meeting. Yeah, no, I, I, you're gonna, you're gonna get in front of people that are all across kind of the, you know, your, your, your sales and marketing funnel, right? They're going to be in a lot of different stages. So yeah, your profile on LinkedIn needs to be built out well. It needs to be representative of who you are and be updated. Uh, there's different functions within building out the LinkedIn profile, you know, where you can direct people to your website, you could direct them to your company page. Uh, there's different options in there. So you, you just have to think about like, what are the different actions that I would want people to take and how do I make it really, really easy for them for them to do. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I'd really just kind of recommend is make sure it's built out well, that you have calls to action. And then, you know, you don't have to be 
posting content every single day on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I think being active on LinkedIn, um, you know, I'm probably posting, you know, once or twice a week on LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to a lot of in-person networking events as well. So I went to two in-person networking events yesterday and met probably 12, 12 people. I got their cards um, or we already connected on LinkedIn, but that'll be like 12 new connections on LinkedIn that of, you know, founders and owners. So when I do live streams in the future, going after that group, they're going to get bundled in and they're going to start getting invites to my live stream. So I think still doing offline events and integrating your LinkedIn in how you are um, staying in front of people um, mm -hmm. is a great way to do it because it doesn't really require, you know, any more effort when you're kind of bundling these audiences up and then um, inviting them to events that you're doing um, or if you're sharing an asset. Um, the last thing, you know, there there is a version of LinkedIn Sales Navigator that also has something called Smart Links, and I haven't um, played around with that a ton yet. But what that allows you to do is to post some of the assets you might that you might have into your Smart Links hub on LinkedIn, um, and what that allows you to see is you could share links out to these Smart Links on LinkedIn uh, through email on your website wherever you want to put it. Um, and when people access those smart links to like view your your PDF, um, LinkedIn um, will tell you who the people are, how mm -hmm. much time they're spending, and exactly what pages they're looking at. So uh, there there's uh, there's another opportunity I think for some of the uh, agents out there to take a look at smart links and and see if that's something that you might want to integrate into um, kind of the the assets you're producing, but then also trackability to be able to see who's showing interest. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I you know, just uh, hearing about, you know, hearing your strategies and your tips, you know, I, I just think LinkedIn is such a great way uh, for agents to really start trying to build up their referral pipelines and, sure. you know, and, you know, still use the platform to go after those one off sales. But really, I, I think the 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 real opportunity there is to build those connections with the different uh, professionals in your the, the mortgage lenders, all the different uh, yep. people that are have wide, um, you know, spheres of influence that really do overlap uh, the people that you're going to be targeting. Agreed. No, I think that's a phenomenal approach is, yeah, connecting with just your target market of who could actually buy from you, but then also building out your referral network because you're, both of those audiences would be interested in thoughtful, smart content that you might be producing. Yeah. yeah. Tell me, um, you know, before, I, before we wrap up, tell me about Rainmaker and, and what, uh, what you guys do uh, offer. Yeah. So what I love about the model is it's completely transparent. Everything that I'm doing, um, you know, I'm just really taking certain actions that we want to take on a, on a client's um, LinkedIn account, and we're just automating some of that out. And we're doing it in the ways that we've been talking about today, where uh, connections, messages, LinkedIn event invites, you know, those types of things where we're taking that kind of, if you almost call it like a burden off of the client and, um, and doing it in a very, very transparent way. So the client can log into their LinkedIn anytime they want, and they can see the messages being sent, the invites being sent, the connections being made. They can look at their LinkedIn analytics. It's all representative of the, the work that, that, that we're doing um, with Rainmaker. Um, I also um, set it up. It's almost like a white glove SaaS where um, there's no contract. It's just month to month. There's two pricing plans. One ninety nine a month if I'm growing out a network, or four ninety nine a month if I'm growing out a network plus like eleven other campaign types. And so, really, that's what clients are hiring me for is strategy and um, some layers of, of, of automation. And it's great. I love educating. Uh, if you go to RainmakerGrows.com, there's a free consultation button. It just sets up a Calendly with me. Um, I'm the I'm the only one. Um, in in the quote unquote company right now, so I'm the one that's doing all the work. I'm the one that's running my you know automations and um, everything in the back end. My client, they really don't have to spend any time on anything other than ensuring that we're targeting the right audiences and then creating the content. And then we'll we'll use the content and experiment and see what gets traction and what doesn't. Um, but uh, it's a great a great way to start leaning into to LinkedIn um, off of everything we've talked about today. I'd highly encourage your audience to just start doing all the things we're talking about today manually. And if you yeah. get up to a point where you feel like, you know what, I want to take some of this off my plate, that's a great time to have a chat with me. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, uh, just hearing about the different opportunities out there, I, I really, you know, I hope people listening to this do start, you know, spending a little bit more time on their LinkedIn accounts, because it is one of those things. It's amazing how many, how many times when I, uh, even just do a quick Google search of an agent that maybe uh, we're working with and another aspect of our company we're having on here. And they do have a LinkedIn page and it, it does pop up, you mm-hmm. know, on that first page of Absolutely. Google. Yep. And, you know, but there's really, when you look at it, they're maybe not necessarily utilizing it uh, all that much. Yeah. Right. I mean, again, at the end of the day, LinkedIn, you know, it's people, it's human beings, and all of those people are potential customers. And I can tell you that, you know, as, as, as you're seeing, if most agents aren't really doing a lot on LinkedIn, that just gives those agents that want to take time to, to start utilizing LinkedIn just a better opportunity to start taking advantage of the, of the LinkedIn network in a very authentic and meaningful way. Yeah, absolutely. I really do appreciate you taking the, uh, the time to speak with us today. And I, I think, you know, all of the, all the tips and advice, those are very actionable items that anybody can uh, jump right into. Yeah, well, I, I enjoy talking about it. Uh, so feel free, anyone listening, to, to reach out. Happy to just chat through um, any questions you might have. And uh, Michael, thanks so much for having me on. I want to thank Colin for joining us today and think LinkedIn has real potential for real estate agents to grow their spheres and drive more sales. Remember, if you're interested in learning more about Rainmaker, visit rainmakergrows.com. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.